Hello, everyone. Uh, this is the Monday, November 28th, 2022 meeting of the Northampton Historical Commission. Um, it is a remote online meeting and it is being recorded. I'm sure you probably all just heard that. And we um, always start these meetings with a public comment period. If uh, there are members of the public who are in attendance, who have uh, anything to share with us uh, that is not related to items on the agenda, um, this would be the time to speak up now. And uh, please state your name and your address if you're doing so. Um, um, I have C. Jacqueline. Jacqueline, are you there? And if maybe you're speaking and you're muted. Okay, we'll move on from Jacqueline to Darcy. Darcy, are you there? I am. Uh, okay. I, Darcy Sweeney, 31 Lexington Avenue, Florence. I'm just asking that under item seven, uh, neighborhood conservation districts be included, that there be a, a discussion allowed of neighborhood conservation districts. Thank you. That's all I wanted to say. Okay, um, Darcy, just, um, I typically don't respond during this period, but I just wanna say that it's, um, this is not something that the commission has materials on to review and typically our items on the agenda, um, we are given preparation materials to review so we can come to these meetings informed. I think if um, that's something that is uh, of interest to be reviewed in the future, um, it would be advisable to, you know, submit some materials for us to look at ahead of time. Um, I'm not sure that any, everyone on the commission even knows what a neighborhood contract-based industry is. So we need to um, come to these discussions uh, just with a lot of background information. But thank you. Okay. Uh, so is Jacqueline, I'll try you one more time. Um, okay. <laughs> um, is that working now? <laughs> that's working now. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Jacqueline McCraner. I live in Ward 3 at 124 North Street. And I actually had um, the same question as Darcy. Uh, since number seven tonight isn't going to work for us to speak about neighborhood conservation districts, and that's something that you're open to possibly discussing in the future, but would just like to have more materials on that. Um, could you let us know uh, to whom we should send those materials? And sorry yes. for my old kitty uh, squawking in the background. Right, so no, that's fine. We, we welcome all humans and animals to these meetings. Um, that's something that Sarah um, and I can talk about after the meeting and we can be in touch with you about that. Okay, great. Should I um, send an email to you to respond to and or you have my email? Um, I would advise you to send that to Sarah LaValle if you do not have her email. Um, I do. I, I can do that. Right. That's the right. Sarah, Sarah is our staff liaison and she typically uh, interacts with the public ahead of these meetings. I shouldn't say typically always does ahead of these meetings. And um, I would send any correspondence to her and Sarah and I can <clears throat> discuss it. And then we'll um, uh, decide on the best way to proceed as, as um, a, an agenda item for the future. Okay, wonderful. That sounds great. Thank you, Thank Jacqueline. You. Thank you. And then I have Jackie Balance. Jackie, are you there? Uh, you may be muted and... Jackie? There, now I've unmuted. Perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I have, in fact, sent material to you and to Barbara and to Sarah and to a couple other me members of the commission, as well as to Historic Northampton and former members of the Historical Commission who are informed about what NCDs are. And I'm surprised to hear you say that you need some preparatory information. Um, but that's not what I wanted to comment about tonight. I wanted to comment about how your predecessors on what was the then iteration 
of the Historical Committee Commission back in 1991, um, produced a document evaluating Bay State Village, downtown Florence and Leeds Center for local historic district designation. Now I have informed myself of what local historic district means. And I'm speaking now with an understanding of my neighborhood, Bay State Village. I have roots here going back to the 70s. I'm on the board of directors of the Bay State Village Association, which has been around since the 1980s. It's a 501c3, so it doesn't get political, but we do have a list serve of about 400 of the approximately 600 households in Bay State Village neighborhood. We're a close-knit community, famous for our June tag sale. We communicate with each other regularly. And my sense of the pulse of my neighborhood is that unlike some of Northampton's fancier neighborhoods, we would rather not pursue local historic district status. We find that neighborhood conservation district status would seem like a tool that would give us more influence over what happens to us right where we live. Our goal is to maintain a streetscape that's in harmony with our mid 19th century workers village heritage. And because other cities legislated MD NCDs under their historical commission, we're asking for an honest and brief conversation tonight, just a few minutes about how to arrange a historical forum, an educational forum about NCDs on the commission's agenda going forward. And maybe next month or January, sooner is better than later. We just wanna talk about talking about it. Can you give us that much? Okay, so Jackie, I think um, the, the best thing to do again would be to uh, put together a, um, just a summary of what you're interested in doing, the points that you would like to make, and we'll put it on the agenda for December, and um, we can have a discussion about it then. I just want to step back about um, the commissioners not all knowing what neighborhood conservation districts are. Um, we have a number of new members that are coming, um, just getting up to speed. And um, we are, you know, gradually as our meetings take place, we are trying to um, introduce new topics and that would be one of them in the future. Um, the other thing too, you know, is that we are in the midst of doing a preservation plan for the city. And I know that the uh, consulting team that's working on that is looking at um, neighborhood conservation districts as one of many preservation tools that may be appropriate for the city. So we have to work within that context. Um, I know it, it's cumbersome. It's probably not as, um, as uh, rapidly moving as people would like, but that's uh, the context that we're working in, as well as in the larger comprehensive plan for the city. So, you know, you're welcome to, again, you know, put together an outline for us, uh, a process, you know, a, a series Martha? of points that you would like to talk about, and we'll take it up um, in December. Martha, there's a conflict in December with the um, Community Resources Committee meeting, exactly the same time, exactly the same day. Community. Maybe January would work better. Would that be possible to think about? Uh, we can, uh, we, you know, we'll talk, we haven't uh, even talked about our December meeting yet, um, <laughs> so I'm not sure what the conflict with that is, but um, yeah, January is possible too. Okay, we'll talk about it later. Thank you. Thank you. And then we have Nan. Nan, can you? Hi. Uh, yeah. Hi, Nancy Smith, 48 Chapel Street. Uh, just very quickly, um, also want to um, express my interest in uh, looking into NCDs, whether it be in uh, December and January. Um, I think it's something we can all learn from, and Jackie's got some good contacts that can be maybe do presentations. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you. And we have Meg. Thanks. I'm just going to piggyback 33 Aldrich Street, also really interested in exploring neighborhood conservation districts. Thank you so much for letting us um, entertain that possibility. Thank you, Diane. Oh, Meg, I'm sorry. And Diane? Hi, Diane Scott. 
44 Landy Avenue here in Florence. Sorry, my name says Massachusetts. Um, you can't change it once you're in the meeting. So I just want to say that I also support um, Jackie's point. And if January works better for everybody, that's great. But I'm very inter interested in pursuing that um, because I think that the question of what we are what we are striving to preserve is something that's important to me. So thanks very much for taking that up. Thank you. And is it Tusi? Yes, hi, this is uh, Tusi Gastongay. I live at 121 Willow Street. And I just wanna second what Jackie has requested. I think it's really important that we start talking about NCDs as soon as possible. And we'd love to have you guys work with us on that or we'll work with you. Thanks so much. Uh, any other comments? Okay, great. Uh, we have um, next item on the agenda is approval. Well, I'm going to I'll do a very short chair's report because we don't have a lot of time tonight. We have a, a couple of lengthy agenda items. Um, I just wanted to mention to folks that uh, one, um, the preservation plan is moving along and um, we are, the subcommittee is gonna be uh, meeting together again. We have not set a date. So uh, committee members, you'll be getting a message from Sarah about this um, to plan for a future, pub future public event. So that's moving forward. Um, and also wanted to just let all the commissioners know and members of the public as well that the um, walking tour signs of, that the state hospital have all been um, installed. And if you're out for a late fall stroll on a beautiful sunny day, you might want to take that in up to the state hospital. And um, the web there's is a website devoted to this and that will be updated with a map that you can access so you can navigate more easily. And there's lots more to talk about, but I'm going to move on. And the next item is the approval of minutes. And we have one set from May 2nd of 2022. And I need to have a, um, a motion on this. And uh, I do believe I've learned this from the Community Preservation Committee that those who are not on the commission at the time can can indeed vote on this regardless, whether they're in attendance or not. So any motion to approve? I would move to approve the minutes. I, again, I wasn't at the meeting either. I'm not a new commissioner, but I wasn't at the meeting, but um, I'd be happy to approve them if people who were there feel that they're okay as written. I'll second it in exactly those same terms. Okay. Any discussion um, about it? It's going pretty good. If um, you are not a commissioner, if you could please mute yourself, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, okay, if there's no more discussion, uh, Sarah, we should take a vote. So, uh, roll call, Greg? Yes, I. Harvey? Yes. Dylan? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Steve? Yes. And Martha? Yes. Unanimous, thank you. Great. Okay, um, the next one on the agenda is a public hearing to determine whether the carriage house accessory structure at 22 Lily Street, and that is map ID 17C-283, should be determined preferably preserved pursuant to the city's demolition review ordinance. That's chapter 161 of the general code. Um, this property, um, the structure on this property was reviewed by the subcommittee and it was determined to be historically significant based on the criteria that are uh, laid out for that determination. And so our charge, um, today is to tonight is to decide whether we believe this should be uh, preferably preserved. And do we have the owner of the property here? Is that you, Katrina? Thank you for coming. It's nice to see you. Um, I think it would be, I will go through um, the evidence for preferable preserved um, status 
But if you had it, you had anything you wanted to share with us about it, we did get your letter. Thank you very much for putting that together. It was very clear the challenges that you're up against. Um, if you had anything else you wanted to add to that before I go through the uh, evidence. Yeah, um, if it's appropriate or helpful, I went out today and took a lot of photos of the carriage house and garage because I saw that that was listed um, as one of the things desired for evidence. So I'm happy to screen share and show those at any point or alternatively, I can do my best to share them with Sarah in some capacity, I have 34, so um, I can't email them, but I can find another way to share them if the commission would like to see those photos. I think that would be really helpful, actually. Yeah. Um, I don't know if everyone got out a chance to see it. I went by, it was a while ago, because I heard this was, it might be happening. Um, but that would be really helpful, Katrina, I think, for yeah. us to take a look at them all together. Sure. Whenever you tell me, I can do it. Uh, yeah, I just made you a co-host, so you should be all set. Okay. Should I do it now? That'd be great. Okay. I'm going to apologize in advance. Uh, the best way I could find to do this is to make a slideshow. Every time I turn on the slideshow, music starts playing in the background. It'll be there for one second until I can mute it. So just bear okay. with me while I uh, quickly set this up. Um, yeah, there's the music. Okay, hold on. And now I'll screen share with all of you. Um, uh, I won't narrate it, but I'm happy to go back and answer what some specific things are if people have questions. I just think any narration would be annoying. Um, so here we go. Is everyone able to see my screen and see the photos? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. I'm just going to move this thing down and then, whoops, now I have to move the controls. Oh, no, here they are. Okay. And the music looks like it's down. I'm going to pause for a second. It seems to take a second for it to actually clear the photo. I will say this is the back of the property. It's the back side of the carriage house. And that is the last one. Um, before I un unshare the screen, is there anyone that anyone wants to see in particular? Otherwise, I'll just stop sharing. Sounds like no. Okay. I would say so, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. Okay, so we have um, circulated with the um, your letter as well as um, other information from the planning department. Um, we also have the um, the B form, form B, which is the inventory form for the Mass Historical Commission, which um, 
suggested that this property would be a contributing resource to a Florence Center historic district. There isn't one at the moment, but potential district. Um, so it would be contributing features that so the historical integrity would be part of that. But I also will state that the B form really doesn't um, document the outbuilding, which in this case would be the barn. So that is not included. Um, so for the commissioners, um, just I'm going to run through, there are nine um, pieces of evidence. They're called evidence to be gathered in order to render a determination um, of whether this property or building should be preferably preserved. And if so, um, what type of a demolition restriction we might want to put on it. Um, so I'll just run down those so everybody can remember. Um, one is what is the current condition of the building or structure? So we you're wonky, you're fading in and out. Now. We know uh, roughly what, what's going on with that. And also from Katrina, how intact is the building or structure? I'm fading in and out. Martha, yeah, you're fading uh, in and out. Oh my goodness, I don't know why. That's interesting. Um, it seems okay, better now. Okay, I don't know what that was. Uh, what is the age of the building or structure? Is the building or structure an exemplary representation of a certain style or period? And if so, how many of those ex exist? What is the building or structure's role in the streetscape? Are there exemplary construction elements that embody distinctive characteristics of a period? Does the building or structure yield information important to history? Has the building or structure been designed by a famous and or local architect? And finally, has the building or structure been removed from its original location? If so, does it still have architectural value or is the surviving structure importantly associated with a historic uh, person or event. So those are nine items. And I'm, um, you, you, you've all seen this material. I um, would be open this up for any discussion that we would have about it. If anybody has any comments, commissioners that is. And we'll start with you, Dylan. I'm gonna go around. Okay. Okay, keep going. Steve, do you have any thoughts? Um, I just had a question for Sarah. I know that there are people that work on a national register district in the Florence area. Um, is there any discussion of a local historic district as part of that research or um, a completely separate process? Or is there anything you can, any information you can give us related to that? Uh, there is a National Register District being pursued in Florence. If you give me a couple minutes, I can tell you uh, whether this building is within the, the boundaries of that district or not. <laughs> Muting and unmuting, getting used to Zoom again. Um, do we know if that application has been filed with the state or is it something that's still in process or what's the status? It's still in process at the moment. It hasn't been submitted um, the committee for Northampton is working with, with a, uh, a consultant on that and they're going back and forth with Mass Historic and it, it's nearing being final, but uh, isn't quite there yet. I see, so the state office has had some some review of that. Yes, so. yeah, okay. Definitely. Great, thanks. Harvey, you were on the subcommittee. Yeah, I will say I was pretty persuaded by Katrina's letter about the hardships that are associated with the carriage house. And it does seem that the historical character of the house is quite clear. The carriage house seems a little less important than the house itself to me. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Dylan, back to you. Yeah. I was I was finally able to unmute thanks to this mouse. Um yeah, I would first say that I really appreciated um hearing of all the efforts that Katrina went to. Um beforehand, it's very rare that these get to us, the owner having done that much work to try to preserve um, a house, let alone a, a secondary property or a building on the property. Um, 
it it has a number of connections to local history. Alfred Lilly owned it, who's who's very important Florence figure. Um, although there's no evidence that he ever lived there, but it makes sense that that is where uh, Anna Garland Spencer and William H. Spencer, who were some of the early speakers of the Free Congregational Society, would have lived because of the proximity and because of the connections between Lily. Um, that said, you know, it's, I think that their connection speaks more to the need to preserve the house because there's there's no direct evidence to the carriage house or or no real record. I mean, we can see it in the 1890s atlases that it was there, that it had the same basic shape, but uh, I, I don't see, I haven't been able to find anything in historic newspapers with references to the outbuilding um, and how it was used. And uh, I looked at the most recent map that the consultants put together for the Florence nomination and 22 Lily Street is within that area. So Sarah, does that mean um, it's being listed as a contributing resource as in the data, in the um, data? It would be. Data sheet? Okay, and the, and the app building? Uh, I don't think, I'm not sure if it specifically lists the outbuilding. I don't know if they've gotten that far yet. Okay. 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 Um, Barbara, any thoughts? Well, I was also, I'm also on the subcommittee that ruled that the building was the, even the outbuilding was significant, but I also am um, very happy to hear what um, Katrina, you tried to do and what your intentions were when you bought the property and why it's a difficulty. Unfortunately, it's another building that's an example of just, you know, deferred maintenance and neglect. And then what do you, uh, what do you do with it afterwards? Um, it's because it is one of the few remaining buildings of this type, this kind of carriage house. Um, I, I really feel and, and it makes me unhappy to think that it's going to disappear. Um, and it really is the only one on the street. Uh, these in-town barns and carriage houses are just, most of them have disappeared in the, in the whole uh, city of Northampton. But, um, and I was encouraged to hear also that you had tried to see if someone else would take it, move it, and maybe they'd have to completely demolish it and then rebuild it, um, which it's kind of nice that it might be preserved, but I think its significance is being on site with next to the house where it was. And I understand it's, it's just probably cost prohibitive and for other reasons just really can't be um, restored and get a new foundation, you know, unless, unless, you know, money were absolutely no object, which it isn't, you know, and you're, you're definitely doing a lot to preserve the house itself. Um, so I don't think that I would want to impose a demolition delay or, or find it preferably preserved because, I mean, I do want, I, you know, in my heart, I want to say, yes, this should be preferably preserved, but I can't see us putting a demolition delay on it. Um, uh, I would hope that maybe you would try a couple other venue, a couple other um, avenues to, uh, try and get somebody to do something with it. Cause it, I mean, it is a very nice building and it's just a shame where it is that it's deteriorated and that the foundation is in really bad shape. Um, but uh, I, get, I think that's all I have to say. Okay, thanks Barbara. Greg, did you have any thoughts about it? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. So um, I spent the first four years of my life on Lily Street, so it has a kind of an important uh, uh, aspect to me. Although riding my tricycle down uh, 56 years ago, I don't remember the building. Um, but I've got to say by her letter and being the realtor in me, that the cost that somebody is going to spend on saving the structure is uh, pretty cost prohibitive. Um, I'm sorry to see that it will probably be demolished. Maybe the materials can be used for something, uh, recycled. But um, you know, it's just it's unfortunate. Previous owners uh, didn't take quality care of the building, and I believe that from what it sounds like, 
is at the point of uh, no return. So I agree with the last couple of speakers that uh, <clears throat> its significance, I believe, is fantastic. But I believe at this point that the structure uh, has been um, rotted away just too severely. So. Okay, and I, I would just add to that as well. I, I do also really lament the fact that so many of these, um, you know, back of the property old buildings have disappeared. Um, and it's always sad to see another one go. Um, you know, when I get into a bind like this on this decision, I always look back at the evidence, the nine uh, pieces of evidence and try to see if there's a, majority of items that uh, helps kind of push this towards being preserved. And I really only can see maybe three out of the nine, uh, maybe four. And so that to me doesn't seem like it's um, enough to save it. Although it's a very hard decision. Um, Katrina, I'm so glad that you took all those photos of it. And um, I would encourage you to um, uh, you know, um, add that, well, I don't know what the process for doing this would be, Dylan, maybe you could help, I don't know, you know, get, submit those um, so they could be added to the, the form B um, so that we have a documentation of this, perhaps along with the Sanborn map, I think was included in your um, materials that show uh, what it what it was. Um, and that, I think that would help document it further. That would make me feel more comfortable. Um, knowing that there was a piece of evidence of it. So that's my feeling. Does anybody have any other comments or questions for Katrina? And I also did appreciate you reaching out to Jane at the um, Emily Dickinson Museum. And I know that they are constructing the carriage house of the evergreens. And um, I think they have to adhere to a very strict uh, design for that because they do have a few photos kind of of it that they're probably using. But if may, I may have to say anything or do I wait for another? No, yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you're part of this conversation. Um, I nearly tackled her when I took the tour of the Emily Dickinson and heard that they were building a carriage house because I really thought the gods were looking down on me and that <laughs> this would just travel down Route 9 to its um, new yeah. home. The one thing I forgot to mention, I don't know if it's useful, since learning that we would be uh, at this meeting today, I also tried to reach out to my neighbors. Um, my uh, neighbors submit, I just made a Google sheet. Um, I was only able to get 10, but I made certain that they felt free to leave any comment, not, not just ones you know, in favor of one direction or the other. So if I could submit those as well with the um, photos, it's important to me. John um, Boland across the street from me is very active in the community and I thought had a really thoughtful response. And I just would like to make sure that those are included as well yeah. for the commissioners. Yeah. I think that would be really great to have all that packaged together as just documentation. Okay. Steve, did you have something else you wanted to add? Yeah, I had another question for staff, for Sarah. Um, does the code or guide, administrative guidance provide any um, uh, helpful ideas about how to weigh those nine factors that um, Martha was mentioning? I mean, it seems like there's a lot of different kinds of material in there and that we're asked to assess not only um, historical associations or um, contributions to a historic resource, but a number of other factors. Martha, it sounded like the first, the first of the nine that you mentioned was condition. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so, uh, Sarah, is there are they all weighted equally, or does one? Do you only need one to be considered a potential resource, or how how are we supposed to weigh those nine factors? Yeah, I mean the ordinance isn't specific. It really does provide the commission with a lot of latitude to be able to weigh those factors and figure out which one is important or not important for any given structure or building. Um, you know, I I think it was intended to be a little bit open ended on purpose um, because every building is different, every site is different. Uh, but there's really nothing else that's 
really useful for the commission and decision making within the, the structure of the ordinance itself. Okay, so there it's sort of a a la carte. It is, <clears throat> yeah. Any, any or all of those factors might be cited as evidence of a rational decision. Okay, thanks. Any other thoughts from anybody? And if not, um, I'd entertain a motion to either. <laughs> Martha, um, before you do a motion, Martha, did you just want to see if there's any public comment? Sorry. I don't see any. No. I don't. Sue, do you want to speak? I see you there. Hi, Sue. Sue is, yeah, there she goes. Okay, lovely. Sue knows more about this carriage house than any of us, so I, I'm glad that you're here. <laughs> you're muted, Sue. Sorry, I thought I had unmuted myself. Um, so I was born in that house and um, my parents owned it. And before that, my great grandmother owned it. Um, our family bought it in 1918 to 1920. So I just, I'm on this um, call because I'm, I'm seriously sorry that my parents did not um, preserve it. And um, I'm just very regretful that that occurred. It was sort of out of sight, out of mind, <laughs> as many of these carriage houses um, are. I just, I urge you to give any preference um, to this property. Um, it was loved for many years and the barn was well used and um, the carriage house existed um, in good condition for many years. And um, it was taken care of, but that's, it's not, that's neither here nor there. I just, um, my mother always said a rumor that it was the parsonage of the Cosmian Hall. Um, but I don't know that for a fact because there was a fifth room upstairs at the top of the stairs, um, that she always said was the office. So, um, I just urge you to, to make a good decision on this and and um, I urge you to give that preferential designation. That's all. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, any Sue. Other any other members of the public? Dylan, did you have something you wanted to say? W were you saying that the that the house was the believed to be the parsonage? Okay. Right. Yes. Thank yes. you. Not, not makes, the carriage house. <laughs> right. I just wanted to be clear. That makes a lot of sense just from looking at the historical record of, of who owned the property in the early years. So I think that's certainly possible. Um, I'm a member of the public, Deirdre Mucho. I live at the lumber yard. Um, I just want to say uh, the presentation that was not narrated, um, I, I think at, in public comment, I might in future ask that um, certain things be narrated when they're just all visual because that was totally lost on me. It, it would take some creativity, I agree, but um, yeah, just keep in mind that if anyone recognizes the name Deirdre Muccio, I am blind and a, a little bit of added visual detail might sometimes be helpful. Okay, thank you, Deirdre. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. Sure, cool. We'll remember that. Anybody else have comments on this? Tough toys. I guess one question I would have for you, Katrina, is um, I understand your insurance situation, which is really tough. And I know those uh, insurance um, providers can be very difficult in certain situations um, or strict, I should say. Um, do you believe that, there, that you've exhausted all of your possibilities for saving this, for having it dismantled and taken elsewhere, um, for hoisting it up and mm -hmm. having it a foundation put underneath that. Um. Yeah. yeah, I'm happy to answer. First of all, Deirdre, I really apologize to you that I didn't narr narrate that. And um, thank you so much for sharing that. That was um, important to do. And I'll keep that in mind going forward. Um, also, Sue, thank you so much. I, we've talked about this. I know this is hard. I'm near tears because 
this wasn't the plan. Um, so it doesn't feel very good. Um, let me compose myself for a second. Um, I actually was hoping, I am probably the person that knows the least on this call, meaning I have very little uh, depth of time in the community. Um, I moved to teach at Amherst a year and a half ago, um, and obviously far less time with the home uh, and the resources available, though I tried to do the best that I could. I My hope was that you all had ideas for me about, uh, you know, what other other options or other things to explore or anything like that in so far as I know what to do as sort of, a, you know, a plebeian out there. Um, I, I don't know what else to do. I did put in the chat that um, that Right Builders is also on the call here with me, Ryan and Nick. I, oh, there's Ryan. Yeah. And so if people had questions for them about sort of what would be involved to stabilize, they would be the people to ask. Um, I really don't understand uh, a preservation style demolition and what's involved in that where you try to salvage particular pieces, for example, the slate roof, the cupola, um, and any possible beams in there that, that might still be okay. There's no question the garage is... Um, well, maybe Nick and Ryan could speak to this. Garage is newer. Sue could could confirm that. That is uh, in, I mean, I just don't think there's anything salvageable there. It's had so much water infiltration, but um, I don't know of anything else uh, other than um, possibly, actually, John told me so John, uh, I keep mentioning my neighbor, it's because he's so knowledgeable. In fact, he also sent me a document about the, um, whoa, what is it, Cosmian, um, well, I think it's what you were speaking to earlier, the rectory, something like that. Anyway, he sent me a document about that. I can also share that. I don't know where he got it from. But all that to say, one suggestion he had that I did not explore was the Hadley farm museum and that possibly they would be interested i don't know based on my really dispiriting conversations with the emily dickinson museum i uh, i don't hold out a lot of hope because i think things are more complicated and expensive than than what a lot of these nonprofits are capable of doing um but that would be my other idea well my Oh, I, I would have a suggestion. I've been sitting thinking about it. I'm also on the board of Historic Northampton, which has been undertaking some major reservation, major renovations of over the years of buildings that had a had a fair amount of neglect. And we're actually in the process of restoring in an early 19th century barn, which actually was jacked up. And I don't know, recently we had a community um, event where people came and they had the the barn on um put it on rollers and we literally just rolled it out of the way so a new foundation could be done and then we're going to roll it back afterwards and just over the years that uh, the two the co-directors there laurie sanders and betty sharp have found people who are and the people you've consulted are top-notch people i have you know jonathan Wright's or Wright builders has done work for me over the years and i know these other people also so i'm not saying that they don't know what they're because they do know what they're talking about but somehow in historic northampton they've found people who just really think even more outside the box and come up with very um with alternatives to doing things maybe the standard way or the way people normally think about it so i would probably get in touch with them in historic northampton and um douglas thayer and his crew are is one of the the con contractors who's done a lot of work and he just you know he he finds salvage things that save the organization money and figures out a way to make them retrofit them into our basement for storage and so he's really been very creative in that way so it, it might it, it can't hurt to consult with them to ask them what they think Yeah, Barbara, that's a great suggestion. And I, the other question, um, I don't think that this was included in your letter. Um, 
I'm just wondering if this building could be sort of stabilized, you know, just like minimal um, amount of effort to stabilize it. So to kind of uh, retard any, you know, significant, um, really um, imminent decay. And um, I'm wondering if it would help you in your uh, negotiations with the insurance company if we did put a restriction on it, you know, a demolition delay. I I can't, uh, this is like so far out of my wheelhouse right now that I only just want to say one thing because I feel like that's a builder question, insurance question. I do yeah. have a letter from the insurance company when I had it as residential. Um, I think the part that's not, oh, sorry, I didn't finish my thought um, regarding needed repairs or, or threat of cancellation. I, what I was told, uh, my insurance is um, Bresnahan in Amherst, they're the brokers helping me, um, is that any foundation issue, which you can very much see when you walk around it, um, those bricks were the foundation that was left without the mortar, um, mm -hmm. that the foundation has to be replaced, like the sort of the big um, risk, the big problems, hurdle, I guess, as it were, is the foundation, but I would leave it to Nick and Ryan. They've both seen it um, to speak more, to answer your question more specifically. I'd be, just be interested to hear what your response is. Is there any way to kind of just do a minimal, you know, stabilization just to keep it, um, it uh, bring it up to a stand, a minimum standard so the insurance companies say, okay, we're comfortable with this? Uh, yeah, so really the biggest concern of ours is the foundation and typical process would be to lift the, the building, jack it up, and then put new foundation and pour a new uh, footings underneath it as required. Um, there are some other structural issues with it as well with regards to the wood framing. Um, I mean, certainly it all can be done, but like you've seen uh, with Katrina's uh, report here that it's cost prohibitive. Uh, it could be minimally stabilized, I would suspect, but um, and I can't really speak to what the insurance company would approve of. Uh, we'd have to consult with them further to determine what that is. Um, but the usability of the space is, is the other aspect to it, is we can stabilize it, but is it a useful space? Um, and if it's not really safe for people to go in and utilize, uh, is there a purpose to it? Uh, again, obviously, if it's a historic element and it has uh, significance to it, we want to preserve that. But I'm just trying to understand that better. And if someone knows of of how it was used and and what that significance is, it'd be helpful. Again, maybe just one last comment. I don't know um, about, you know, once the foundation, what happens with the rest of it, the the roof is sagging i have very few people have gone up the stairs i um uh deirdre i'm sorry you didn't see this i had one photo uh that i took quickly from the top of the stairs so that you could see because it's the floor bounces like it's really not safe so my my only concern there too is um i got a call from my neighbors the other day um I happen to have a, a portage on right now because of the construction. And so they were saying that there was someone from the community in there and then the back floodlight went on. And they thought at that point that the person had gone into the carriage house. And um, because of my politics, I wasn't comfortable calling the police at that point. I didn't know who the person was. Um, that said, I've locked it all up, but it makes me nervous from a safety perspective. I don't even want to be in there um, because of the floor, which, um, so a lot of those photos that you saw that were sort of looking down that look like a cluster of boards, that's the floor. Um, so there's a narrower uh, area opening, a broader one that has the second level, but the all of that floor is bouncing so I guess that would be addressed if there were a foundation but again I would leave it to Ryan and Nick to talk about what that means 
for the rest of the structure in the walls. And I guess that's part of what Dan Peterson was saying, the barn specialist. Um, I've gotten mixed opinions from people about whether they felt it could be raised or not in the way that Ryan is describing. Ryan, I think even you had a mixed feeling at one point about whether it could be jacked up in that way. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Uh, you know, you'd, we'd have stabilization efforts to tie the building together before we jacked it up um, mm -hmm. to put a foundation under it. And, and likely we would, rather than having a wood floor go back down, it would be a concrete slab. Uh, you know, those sections that were shown as kind of open to below would really need to be filled in and you know, made safe to lock on. Yeah. And one other thought that I don't know, um, one photo that you probably wouldn't remember is the corner of the garage. Um, the foundation there is cracked and it's now lower and something else, like I did not at this point bring out a soil specialist, um, but my other concern too is the back of the carriage house and its proximity to where the land drops off and what that also means in terms of erosion um, and how to think about that because while it's not at the edge of the property line per se, it goes a little bit down the hill, it is quite close to the edge where it drops off. Okay. Uh, well, uh, any commissioners have any other questions about this? Any other thoughts? This is a tough one. And Katrina, I can tell you have, um, you're emotionally divided about this, which is, we appreciate. Sarah gave me the idea to make it a movie theater, which brought me tremendous joy and laughter. So that was the plan because I had no other plan. And I said it to many people and then much more came out, but I did imagine it as a community space slash movie theater. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Okay. We um I think we're done with our discussion and I think everyone's had a chance to weigh in. So if we um I entertain a motion whether this building to be determined properly preserved, preserved to the ordinance, and whether, uh, if so, whether, um, well, we need to take that first step based on the evidence and the discussion. Someone, a motion? Can I ask a no. question about this even before we have a motion? Just because you were saying that's the first step. If it's found preferably preserved, does the commission then vote separately on whether there's a demolition delay or review? That is my period? understanding. Am I correct, Sarah? Yeah, yeah. It, they usually go hand in hand, but not always. Uh, so that they can be separated into two separate motions. I would move that it not be preferentially preserved under the circumstances. Anyone want to second that? Well, I guess I could second it for the purposes of discussion. So I would second okay. it. Okay. Is that a second, Barbara? Yes. So okay. then can I say something about it? Yes, further discussion. Because I was, for the purposes, I was going to give the opposite motion because I feel because in an, you know, in an ideal world, again, where money, other things are not, don't interfere with what we'd like to see happen, that I feel as if this building is should be preferably preserved because of its association with the house and its um, age and the fact that it's really one of the last um, carriage houses in, in town. Um, uh, because I wanted us to go on the record saying that it should be preferably preserved, uh, not necessarily, I mean, I know it's maybe it seems silly to say that and then maybe not have a demolition review on it or period on it, but my preference would be to at least declare it preferably preserved. 
And the, the commission can approve an alternate plan. Alternate plans in the past have included uh, moving of a structure, um, architectural salvage, or just photo documentation. And Sarah, are those things usually um, adopted or recommended at the time of the vote? Or is it, I know in some cases we've continued an item. Um, I'm thinking a lot as this discussion goes on about how in the broadest sense, not necessarily the Northampton ordinance, but in the broadest sense, demolition delay is designed to give time to look at alternatives. It doesn't prohibit demolition. Uh, it's intended to give time for alternatives. So um, it sounds like we have some options for what that time might be if it's not a full year. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Or or suggesting other um, solutions, as you said, like moving it, things like that. Yeah. It in the past, the commission has um, gone up to a year um, it, or provided six months or three months or a, a smaller time frame than, than a year to allow for some additional information to be, be provided or uh, some research to be done. Um, or if the commission is feeling now that you know the, the condition of the structure is such that it probably can't be saved and is ready to move forward with some sort of other alternate plan like photo documentation or arch architectural salvage that could be done at this point. Um, any other, is there any other discussion about this? Is it possible to have this tabled? Um, and the only reason I say that's because I'm brand new to the historical commission and I'm brand new to this subject. So if there was a vote taken today, I would probably abstain only because I don't really feel that I can take a stand one way or the other. I appreciate um, Sue Stone coming on and telling about the history of the, of the property. Um, and I understand that I'm reading being a realtor when she bought it. Um, that it had a potential significance in the purchase uh, being in public land that, excuse me, private land that there's no public funds to preserve it. But I feel personally that I really cannot take a stand one way or the other right now. Um, so if there is a vote, I will abstain, but maybe we can table this while we learn more about it. Okay. I think um, it seems to me that um, Katrina has showed a pretty good faith effort. And if we, we could put a demolition delay, but it does not appear to me that she's rushing to demolish it. And that if we don't do this delay, she'll demolish it tomorrow. That I think she will explore whatever options she can. At least it certainly seems she's done so, so far. I guess that goes back to my question, Katrina, is would it be helpful of you at all to have our, you know, us put a delay on it for a few months? You said you're moving back in February. Is that what you said in your note, your letter? You're hoping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at you, Nick and Ryan. <laughs> yeah, I know how that goes. Awesome. We've had <laughs> oh boy, do I know how that goes. Delay. <laughs> the, the only thing I'll add, uh, I'm just as uncomfortable as all of you, but the one thing I don't wanna have happen is put the house at risk because we're trying to hold off on the carriage house. That one hurts me a bit. And I, I think it's kind of unanswerable in a way, um, meaning, I, you know, I've been puzzling, I'm sorry to take more time, but I just wanna be thoughtful here. I was puzzling how, this wasn't an issue for Sue's mom. And the best I could come up with, unless Sue knows better, is that probably what happened is decades ago, if it was even required, somebody came out when the insurance began and looked at the house and the carriage house and never looked at it again. And so now me as a new purchaser and whatever the current insurance climate is, they came out both times. They came out both for the residential insurance and also for the in construction insurance to inspect it and they walk the property. So what I don't wanna have happen is also get to February and 
here we are and the house is ready and I can't get insurance on the house because we're exploring options for the carriage house. And I don't know that anyone on here can answer that because I actually think it's an insurance question mm -hmm. with all of the providers available. I know Bresnahan, I probably should have invited them too, but um, I know that they we cycled through a couple providers because of the different plans. And also the very first time I got insurance, it had knob and tube. Uh, so I had to be in a special, but Greg, you probably know more about this than any of us, but in any event, I had to be in a special insurance bucket for the knob and tube. Thankfully that's now gone. So it pulls me out of that bucket, but the foundation problem in the carriage house puts me back in some other um, high risk insurance if I can even get it but like I said it's not insured right now so that also terrifies me a bit but um, I, I don't know what the answer is. Greg did you have another question comment? So yes and, and you know <clears throat> you're right what I said earlier about uh, insurance people um, agree well wholeheartedly. I'm making sure that one you do have insurance on your primary residence right now um, making the assumption that you probably got a, a mortgage um, Insurance companies are not nice. And if they do a forced pay insurance policy on you, then that will be um, cost, uh, not so much cost prohibitive, the word I'm looking for, but it very much in that cost uh, and it won't be cheap. So understanding from the uh, her insurance standpoint that I'm reading here that um, she is in a tough spot. And um, again, 150,000 to was to uh, repair the property. Um, again, it's you're I'm between a rock and a hard place because, again, being new, um, but I can see I'm a Libra, unfortunately, so I can see both sides of everything. So that's a it's a tough call. Yeah. Um, and the commission um, is running uh, up against a time deadline. Uh, so if the if the commission were considering continuing the hearing to another date and not making a decision tonight, that would need to be agreed to by the applicant. Um, and other, otherwise tonight is, is really the deadline the, to okay. either implement a, a delay or find that an alternate plan meets the terms of the ordinance um, or to find that the building is, is not preferably preserved. Right. So what about um, the possibility of putting a two-month delay on it? Just to, to buy Katrina a little bit more time, and we would revisit this at the end of January. Let's see where you are. And if, you know, at the end of January, your insurance situation isn't changed, you, you know, you have that, um, it looks like it's just a done deal with them, then the delay expires and you do what you want with it. I don't know that I can answer that like for well and Nick and Ryan I kind of need you on this my understanding I currently don't have a certificate of occupancy maybe um, I'll say what I think might be true and then they're gonna have to just come in and sweep it up and correct me um, and so I would I don't think I can sort of test out insurance until I pass all the various inspections from the city and then get a certificate of occupancy and then approach um, the insurance companies. I will say the insurance I have now is $8,000 a year just to cover the house because of uh, some of the complexity of the property. Um, uh, so I don't know if that would be, but again, it's not insured. I don't know. I'd have to ask Bresnahan, but in part, we excluded it based on my conversations with them because they thought that it would get canceled. And then we couldn't, then I would really be stuck because then mm -hmm. I couldn't continue the housework. Um, so Greg, you're actually messaging me directly. <laughs> I do this all the time, but <laughs> um, yeah, so. Okay, well, so we have a motion on the table from Harvey to um, to vote that it is not properly preserved. Barbara has um, not seconded that. Um, I, so I would still need a second on that, um, on that 
uh, motion if we're to go in that direction. And we can vote and maybe we don't all agree, but let's, that's one way of doing it. It's just to have a second and then we vote on it. Or we could revise the motion. You know, I, I, well, I had seconded it. Yeah. The so there was a, discussion. a motion to that the structure is not preferably preserved uh, in a second right. from the table. Okay. Okay. So do we want to vote on that? We'll vote. Okay. Let's take a vote. Uh, Greg? Yeah, I'm going to hold off. I'm going to abstain. I don't know um, enough about what the ramifications are. Uh, Harvey? I vote yes. Dylan? No. Barbara? No. Steve? No. And Martha? No. Motion fails. Okay. So now what do we do, Sarah? Revise the motion? Table it? Revise the motion. Uh, because you're running up against a, a timeline prescribed in the ordinance, the, the commission does need to come to some okay. sort of decision tonight. Or, or um, ask the applicant's permission to bounce this to another meeting. Okay. Um, um, but I, ideally, that would come with you know, some type of additional information request. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just to review, there's two two parts that are needed: some decision on preferably preserved or not, and some decision and then, on action. What sure. what type of action to take? Okay. Does someone want to make another motion? based on the no's that we heard from the majority of the commission. Anyone? Oh, would, it was Dylan, were Dylan, were you gonna say something? No, no, go ahead. Oh, um, I would propose a motion that we do find the um, carriage house at 22 Lily Street, um, preferably preserved. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. All right. Discussion. Any discussion? And if not, then we need to have a motion to put a time frame on a demolition delay. So, um, uh, Craig had asked for the motion on the table. So the motion is to determine the the carriage house preferably preserved pursuant to the demolition ordinance. Right, correct. Okay, so that's the motion. It's been seconded. We need to vote on it and then the time frame, correct? A time frame or uh, a finding okay. that the ordinance is served through an alternate plan yet to be determined. And when do we determine that alternate plan? Uh, so that would be a, a follow-up discussion. So okay. the, the commission can't leave this hearing tonight without a determination a of plan. a plan, if any. Okay. Or, All right. or an alternate plan that would. Okay. So in the event of time, let's. Uh, why don't we take a vote on the motion, which is that that the building be determined preferably preserved. Greg. Greg, did you hear, are you gonna abstain from this also? I did hear that and I vote yes. Okay. Harvey? Yes, I'll abstain this time. Dylan? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Steve? Yes. And Martha? Yes. All right, motion passes. Okay. So then we need to have a plan in place. And um, if someone would like to make a motion about that, or we can have a discussion, we can have a motion and discuss um, about a time frame for a delay. Anybody have any thoughts about that? Well, Martha, I like your proposal before of possibly doing a two month, so be December and January, 
so that presumably by then Katrina would know, you know, if she needs to get a certificate of occupancy and can't get it with the carriage house, then she would at the end of January, I mean, either she could even come back to us before then, because if, mm -hmm. if some, if we agree to conditions, we can lift a demolition delay before mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. due to end. Um, mm -hmm. if, if it just would completely um, obstruct her ability to get um, her uh, certificate of occupancy. Um, but it might allow just a little more time to see if, and, and again, you have done a lot of work, I know, to figure out what you might be able to do with this. Um, but just to give it a, that little bit more time to see if there's some alternative. I see you shaking your head. Um, I'm you can really see we're as conflicted as you are about this. So I totally understand. And I feel like what, um, what I sense happening is people's discomfort about taking some kind of a stand on this is, is leading people to push it out. But the presumption is that I can get other information. I cannot get the insurance information that I need in advance. How do I explain this? Um, come end of February, I'm slotted to move in. If we push things out, what happens is that the house is then ready. I imagine the house, I don't know, Ryan and Nick can answer this. I could get a certificate of occupancy for the house, but Correct. then what I can't do is move in because I won't have insurance on the house because of the carriage house. So what that then leaves me with is a position at the end of February unable to get insurance and then pushing things out another couple of months where either I'm doing a demolition, continuing to explore things, which I don't know what I'm continuing to explore. And I think what's hard for me is that um, these are deep financial implications for me. And I understand your responsibility, fiduciary and otherwise, to the community. Um, but I'm also spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on this house. We haven't talked about this, and I wasn't sure if I'd mention it, but the work going into this house is well in excess of $300,000. And I'm supporting two homes right now while this is getting done. And I appreciate, I think Sue has left, but I appreciate Sue's comment that the house was loved but neglected and so i'm doing my best within my financial means to do everything that that house needs including getting rid of asbestos and you know it's it's hard to it has financial implications for me and i understand you're in a bind but they're not small financial implications so i guess what i would like if this gets pushed out is something very clear about what you're looking for because since may i've brought people out and if you want more information i need to be told what that is and what will be sufficient. Otherwise, I'm fishing around for things and it's not clear to me what I should be looking for, what more I should do um, in order to help you make a decision. And I think part of it is because it feels bad. And I get that, I feel bad too, but I'm not sure another month or two, unless I know exactly what it is that you're looking for or wanting to know, um, I know what, what else I should be providing to help you reach a place of of decision regarding this. Okay. So we need to come up with either a time period for a delay or some sort of alternative plan that will help preserve the memory of this building if we cannot put a delay on the um, removal of it. 
And, um, you know, a couple of things have been proposed. One would be photo documenting it and making sure all of that information is submitted to the Forbes Library and the keeper of the B forums. Um, that would be one, one item that, you know, may satisfy the requirement. Um, so that would be probably the minimal. And then, you know, the max, maximum would be, um, you know, putting a month or two months on a delay on it and then allowing Katrina to explore any other option, possibly come back to us in January or December, or January, and ask for us to lift the um, restriction. Um, so, our, uh, you know, I need to have you kind of comment on where you think we are on this. Are we at like one end, you know, should we just let this, we want this preserved, the best way to do it is through documentation. Or are you at the other end, which is that let's delay this some more for you know a couple of months, regardless of the financial implications to the owner? How, how are people think? What are people thinking about that, Dylan? Yeah, I'm I'm leaning more towards. I mean, I appreciate that we voted to deem it preferably preserved, um, but at this point, I feel like the effort that we usually ask for people in the review period when we're talking about temporary, you know, shortened lengths of time has already been done. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not sure what else we are going to get. And I appreciate um, the, the uh, Katrina asking for something clear, because I'm not sure we have that clear. So I, I would lean towards just asking for documentation. I think photo documentation would be wonderful. I also think the the input from the neighbors and any stories that go along with those those yeah. photos are, are you know very rich for for preserving the memory of this of this space but i also would just say that i think the preservation of the house itself is the most important thing here um and that that's what i value coming out of this yeah okay i'm gonna go around steve any thoughts yeah i would agree um i think um what one one reason I've been a little slow to weigh in here is that the email with the letter came at three o'clock and I'm I'm just getting back into the game here. So I feel a little bit like Greg after being away for four and a half months um, and trying to decide a complex issue quickly. But I, I do think that the commission could um, make a motion to the effect that um, while preferably preserved, um, there is good evidence that it's in poor poor condition and that mitigation measures, um, including but not limited to photo documentation and possible efforts at salvage or something to that effect, um, could be appropriate in this case. Harvey, your thoughts? I would agree with everything Dylan said. Okay, Barbara? Um, I, too, am persuaded by Dylan, and particularly I thank you for reminding me, I mean, it really, what Katrina has already done is what we usually ask a homeowner to do during the delay period, and you've, I think you really have explored all your options, so I would not object to um, requiring the mitigation that, um, you know, in terms of documentation that's, that Steve suggested, and not okay. imposing a delay period on the demolition itself. Okay. And Greg, any other thoughts? No, I agree with that. everything that's been um, been said. Dylan had it very well stated. Okay, great. So, Steve, would you like to put your thoughts into a motion since you so succinctly stated it? Uh, I just had a few regulatory words in there, I guess. No, you got um, it down. All right, um, and I, I, I do feel out of practice here. Let me see. Um, I will move that um, the commission uh, can, I, I don't even know how to say this. We, we're not granting the demolition permit, right? Because that's what the building commissioner does. Um, no, we will not impose, I guess we put it the other way around. We will not impose a demolition delay um, on, with one condition, and that condition is that the photographs by the property owner and other 
um, historical information that has been gathered be submitted to the commission as mitigation. Great. That sound right? Okay. You got that, Sarah? Yes. Second from anybody? I would second that. Okay, great. Any other discussion? Um, I just want to say, Katrina, I live in one of these houses. I, I, I live in a former carriage house in Northampton. And I think that if our house was in the condition uh, that your barn is in, um, at the time when we bought it, uh, we probably would have thrown in the towel too. It was pretty bad and it wasn't as bad as yours. So anyway, Barb, did you have something else you wanted to yeah, say? No, I, have a, I had a question um, with, um, oh gosh, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, no, I was listening to what you said, but it was that he was saying to the medication, just don't vote yet. Let me think. About okay. No, not both. Yeah. So um, I, I'm completely. I know what it was. Sorry. I know what it was that Steve was suggesting, you know, it gets submitted to the historical commission. I think it would be good to have it if there's some way to have it as part of the form B or at least yeah. a link, you know, somehow so that if somebody looks at that, they get the pictures of the historical, both the historical pictures of the carriage house and the, the you know, it's last hurrah, so to speak. And then the neighbors, uh, people's memories somehow so that it's where the public has access to it when they are trying to look for information about that house and i'm not sure where the appropriate place is or how to do that but that's what i would like to see happen i i can check with mass historic about amending that form b to include this yeah information. i'm sure you absolutely can do that one more thing that those pictures were focused on damage I'm more than happy to have something that's more historically representative. And I'm even happy to bring someone who's more of a professional out than myself with an iPhone to take some photos. Um, that would be fantastic. Yeah, I, yeah. If anyone knows of someone, that, that would be helpful. Otherwise, I'm sure I can figure it out. But that that is not an issue. I wouldn't want it to just be close-ups of falling apart floorboards and things. <laughs> I see yeah, a camera. He's offering his professional service. This is the launch of his professional photography career. Bring it on, right? Okay, so we need to uh, vote on the motion made by Steve. And um, it, does anyone need it restated? Probably not. So Sarah, let's take a vote. All right, Craig? Yes. Harvey? Yes. Dylan? Yes. Barbara? Yes. Steve? Yes. And Martha? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. So Katrina, thank you so much for all of the effort you put into this. This is a very, I, I had a feeling when I went by the property, this was going to be a really tough decision for us, but you know, it was a healthy conversation. Um, I think we really um, brought all of the significant issues related to this property out. And um, again, I appreciate all the effort you put into it to help us make the decision and, you know, wish you the best with it. I know it's great to old, own, old homes, but it also comes with a lot of agony. So the old home will be beautiful. It's, I welcome you all to stop by at any point. I have a white mini and if I'm there, you should see the before and after. It's it's beautiful already. It'll continue to be beautiful. So um, I really appreciate it. I know you have a hard job. Thank you. I know this was a long meeting. Um, frankly, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. Um, so I appreciate the care and the listening. Thank you. Well, and also we appreciate any homeowner who you know takes on a whole property like this that has a lot of uh, decay know what's involved and just your commitment to preserving that piece of history is is wonderful and remarkable we really very really appreciate that. committed very very good <laughs> in see. heart yeah. and pocketbook very committed <laughs> yeah. i gotta Enjoy. say thank you thank you for taking care of lily street i love lily street i have the best neighbors i feel very lucky to be there thank you great okay thank you and thank you ryan Okay, uh, we have one other item on the agenda. We have four minutes left. Um, and Josie, I know, has been patiently waiting um, behind the scenes. Um, is this something we should take up tonight? Should we table this till December? Do we need to do it now? 
Josie, Sarah? Um, I don't have I don't have a preference. I know that it's probably too much to do in four minutes. I, I will say that we have submitted all this to the SHPO and um, you know they only have 30 days, which might actually already be passed for two of these projects because um, I know we were supposed to be on for last month as well. Um, so I'm not sure if there's any requirement to doing it, but um, you know, in the sense that the comments to Mass SHPO won't really be you know, in time anyway. But um, one of the projects we did already discuss with the com committee about maybe two years ago, I remember doing it during COVID on my porch. Um, and so it's probably, it, we, we, we really went by a lot of your suggestions that you had at the time. Um, so I don't foresee that one being, and that one would probably be the most impactful um, of the projects, but we did take into account all of the suggestions and the common comments that we had um, at that meeting. So I, I don't see any major issues, but I don't think a couple of minutes it would be enough to to review it. And okay. just to, to frame this a little bit, because I Martha pointed out, I, I put together a nice staff report to help with this, but unfortunately didn't include it in my email to the commission. Uh, so a section 106 review is section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act. And that requires federal agencies like the VA to consider the effects of federally funded projects on historic properties by consulting with the state historic preservation offices. Uh, so the, the historical commission can, if it wants to provide some input to mass historic, but the VA has gone a little bit above and beyond and uh, has reached out to the commission um, to obtain you know, advisory comments on projects that it's undertaking yeah. as well. Okay, so I think um, it would um, behoove us to table this. And Josie, we'd love to get an update from you. So if you're available at or for a December meeting, that would be great yep. to have. We'll put you on the agenda and just have you, because I think it's important for us to stay in touch with what's going on over there. And you have a big fencing project, which I've been watching. Yes, we do. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. Um, yes. So, right. yeah, so that would be great if we could just get a, you know, an update and. And if we can yeah. provide any input at that point, we will. Yeah, no, that would be great. Because um, we have been taking your input for other projects and moving them forward as we go and design too. So we're hoping to, you know, have proceeded in your guidance, even if it's not specifically for that project uh, on these projects. So uh, yeah, I'm perfectly happy. I'll be here the whole month of December. So great. let me and, know when that is. And the, the commission's meeting in December will be the 19th. Um, the 19th, okay. Because December 26th is a holiday. In the city. Right. Okay. So, do any of the commission members have anything else um, uh, on the uh, that was unforeseen at the time of agenda preparation that they would like to bring up? And if not, we will. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We can wave a vote. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone. Nice to see you all. Thank you. Nice to see you. Hello. Sarah, can you stay?